Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga and today we are going to do a uh, care collab, a uh, update actually on this uh, very beauty in the back with this beautiful dark red blooms and a little bit of purple in it I think but most of it is uh, very dark and I'm talking of course about my uh, Colmenara may say red and this one is a very special orchid well all of them but some of my orchids have a sort of story behind them and this one has that as well actually two uh, beautiful memories on this this orchid but before I'm going to talk about that uh, um, I just want to mention of course that I'm not alone in this care collab uh, otherwise it wouldn't be a care collab um, of course but uh, I'm sharing this update with Nina from Ninja Orchids and um, this is an update, I think, um, in February this year we did a uh, care collab, the first one on, on this beauty. But, uh, yeah, like I said, the, I like my plants, uh, especially the ones with, with a sort of story behind it, a memory or anything like that. Um, for example, uh, birthday gifts or gifts from special people, etc. This one, um, like I said, has two uh, memories for me. The first one is that I... A few years back, my husband and I decided to go on a garden center hunt. Uh, I had a few places where I did find my orchids, but well, we thought, well, we have uh, we're going to take a day off and go on a uh, like I said, a garden center hunt, and especially of yeah, this one I found in a garden center that is now our favorite garden center. We never heard of it, and uh, but we found it when we uh, did search for some garden centers uh, nearby. And um, yeah, it happened to have uh, quite some orchids for sale with good prices. And like I said, it's now our, our favorite garden center. It's a fairly big one with beautiful uh, plants. And he like uh, he likes the plants uh, more for outside, for in the garden. And I uh, always uh, look at the garden, uh, the orchids uh, section, of course. And uh, yeah, when we went uh, went there for the first time, we found this uh, this beautiful Maysay red. I had no idea uh, back then. Um, about this plant, I knew nothing about it, but I saw the, the colors on these blooms and these are one of my favorite colors. I really like almost black, dark red colors, especially on blooms. I think that they are very beautiful. So uh, I did take it home and then I found a name for it because it's fairly common, I think. It's not always easy to get if I uh, may believe other growers, but uh, yeah, there's only one. If you look up the Mesa Red, you can uh, uh, recognize it straight away so uh, it's officially it's no ID but I, we are pretty sure that this is a Mese Red so that's the first uh, memory I have uh, that pops in mind when I look at this this plant it was a very nice day and a uh, nice memory but the second one is also very special because um, <laughs> yeah it always makes me smile a bit because I did my first care collab uh, on this orchid also with Ni Nina from Ninja Orchids um, like I said, February earlier this this year, so I don't uh, didn't do those care collabs uh, much. When I think they are now around for one year, something like that. So um, it wasn't long before I uh, joined in on them. But uh, yeah, this uh, this was the first one, and <laughs> yeah, it always makes me smile because I was so nervous to do my first care collab because I thought everything had to be perfect and. I was a bit bit shy because I thought, well, what can I say about this orchid? Maybe I uh, do give wrong information and I don't want to do that, etc. But yeah, I now uh, learn to just tell you guys what I do. And that, that is, I think, always right. Uh, and I cannot say how you should grow and that wouldn't be okay either. But yeah, I can only share with you my experience and I really love doing that. So therefore, uh, but yeah, this one uh, remembers me of the time uh, when I uh, started doing the care collapse and when, uh, like I said, I was very, very nervous. So this one is a, is a special one, beautiful memories. So let's uh, get it on the table and have a closer look at this beautiful orchid. I just uh, quickly uh, looked it up on my channel and it appears that uh, we did a care collab at April 6. So it's even shorter when uh, when this one started to rebloom again. It uh, in in about six months it did develop 
two beautiful new bulbs and starts to bloom already on uh, at least two spikes and we have one here in the back that is uh, still growing it comes from uh, this bulb here on the left uh, this one and the one on the right here as you can see is uh, putting up those two beautiful spikes so yeah I'm really impressed I had no idea this was a fairly very quick grower I, I, uh, I might say for an orchid this one uh, and twice a year such a display I think that's uh, that's very good and I'm very happy with it and um, I really really enjoy the blooms like I said and I tried to go to zoom in I did uh, whoops other way around <laughs> they put it uh, behind my black uh, backdrop there so uh, because it was very dis distracted um, on the, in the in the orchid or well on my up potting table so therefore I put it on the, the place where I have um, a cloth a black uh, curtain actually and uh, I uh, do take my pictures here I like to uh, do that here but this is also sometimes handy for filming in this case but let's focus on the, on the beautiful blooms they are not very very large I will put my uh, fingers my hand next to them and uh, so you can see a little bit they are not not that big but very very beautiful and they are not not small either don't get me wrong they are absolutely not no uh, not small um, but the amount makes a beautiful display if you ask me it's a very um, yeah they really like to make uh, some blooms this spike in the back is a little bit has a bit a little bit less blooms and then this one this is the first one and actually you can see those very first ones that opened up are now starting to to go but it uh, it blooms for a very long fairly long time i think uh at least some some weeks i think about six seven weeks something like that i don't remember correctly or i'm not com completely sure because i didn't uh, uh write the date down but i think it's uh, in bloom for for quite a while and so I really like the display of the blooms and the flower spikes itself but what I also like is the bulbs these bulbs are very very big and I'm sorry my tripod is not working I try to go slowly down to the to the bulbs there they are and those beautiful leaves and there we see they have a beautiful size to them fairly large if you ask me but uh, like I said very beautiful so um, I'm going to turn it a little bit I think even this one is making the flower spike but it's still not matured it uh, grows uh, a flower spike and then it's still working on the bulb itself it's also putting out new roots as I can see I will show you the roots uh, in a minute but um, yeah and on the other side of this plant I uh, it made I think it, they were starting in April uh, but I'm not pretty sure if I when I did that care club but I decided to uh, make another uh, direction of growth so I have now two uh, directions of growth on this plant which I really like I like the size of the plant but I also like uh, them when they get more bulbs and this is one plant and I try to keep it as one plant as long as I can um, but this one is still uh, and I have something on my finger I don't know what it was <laughs> but um, this one uh, is still not completely matured I think I'm pretty sure actually because uh, it will get a little bit bigger but it's almost there now and as you can see this one this was the previous one I hope you can see this one is a little bit bigger so yeah they uh, they grow uh, quite a while they work quite a while the, those bulbs are fairly big of course but they don't mind blooming in, uh, in the meantime putting out some roots if they are happy they just do everything at once and uh, like I said they absolutely don't mind but you, I see this um, uh, sort of translating in, uh, in the way that I need to water this one. I need to water this absolutely twice a week. I grow this uh, completely self-watered, self-watering pot. And um, I think most of it is pumice. I will uh, try to uh, get, get, yeah, get it out of the outer pot so I can have a look. But it's uh, fairly heavy so I need to... Uh, uh, need my both hands. So I will be right back with a bit of different uh, setup. Now, the only thing that it did uh, change was me getting on the other side of the orchid. So, but now I can uh, lift it and uh, we can have a look uh, at the uh, roots. 
slowly but surely because it's, it's fairly heavy. As you can see, it has a pot filled with roots. It's and we only see uh, one there. Where is it? Uh, here it is. A uh, root coming out of, underneath of that pot. But yeah, it uh, really likes to put out the roots. It's just all over the place. And once again, we have two beautiful growing tips there. I hope you can see them now, both of them. One aerial root still there. And uh, yeah, I really absolutely love growing this orchid. It's such a beauty. And it's really uh, enjoying uh, um, self-watering for me. So it's really easy to, uh, to adapt. And I did forget to check the media. I'm sorry, I will take it out very quickly. I think, yeah, it's most of it is pumice. Yes, yes. It, I don't have this one in LECA anymore. Sometimes I have a mixture of uh, pumice and uh, LECA. But um, like uh, Nina said uh, a, a few weeks back, uh, she called me the uh, pumice king and she was the uh, LECA queen. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much uh, says it all because I really, really like growing my orchids in pumice. Uh, even a bit more than in uh, LECA. But I started out with, uh, with uh, the LECA, so sometimes uh, and you see um, my orchids also standing in LECA or a mixture, like I said, from pumice and LECA. And I think those roots are so amazing. They're very thick and fleshy. And like I said, this, uh, this orchid doesn't mind putting them out. It's making a lot and currently working on some new roots uh, again. But yeah, they are beautiful. Very nice, healthy looking, uh, looking roots. So I really enjoy that. And I really uh, like my transparent pots so I can uh, look at them. But this one, this is a, a, a absolutely... Uh, uh, are an absolute orchid that has a quite a lot of roots. Most of my orchids do make some roots, but not as much as this one. But uh, yeah, it's probably uh, this plant does make a bit more roots in general. But anyhow, um, fertilizer, yeah, I, um, it's getting uh, like every orchid in summer around 100. Sometimes it's 80, sometimes it's 150. But generally speaking, it's around 100. And if I don't forget, I will uh, put a link in where I do discuss the products that I like to use as fertilizers and hormones, etc. But I do uh, need to mention that currently I don't use the MSU formula anymore, but I have the rain mix. So that's what I changed. Uh, I, think I, I think I discussed it uh, in this video uh, that I uh, was uh, about to change it, but in the meantime it happened. So that's the only difference there. But, uh, as we can see, it doesn't uh, mind the rain mix. I think I'm pretty sure it likes it very much. So uh, that's going uh, going okay. So I will, uh, like I said, I will put a link in. And for in the winter, it's around 50. So that n is not much, but what I do... Um, well, first of all, I have so many orchids, so I cannot keep up with... Uh, ones that need a little bit more fertilizer than ones that don't need as much, etc. I try to uh, get a, a general amount that everyone likes. And what I also do, well, what I actually don't do is flushing. And therefore, because I don't flush, I check the reservoir of the pots every three months, three to four months. So I check the reservoirs on the pH and the parts per million. And I never had it happen that uh, they are incredibly low. They are sometimes lower. This one was some... Uh, I had one time that it was around 40. So if you fertilize with uh, 100 parts per million and it has only 40 parts per million left in the reservoir, that means that this one is really eating. And that is to be expected because of the bulbs, the blooms, etc. But still there's something left. And I know it's not all fertilizer that we give them because there's always something in the fertilizer that, that they don't eat, so they'll leave it behind. But still, most of my orchids do have a parts per million around 180 or even more, 150. And some of them, like this one, do have uh, quite, a, uh, quite a, a smaller amount left. So that tells me that they are really eating, like I said, but that they still have enough. And this one, uh, as you can see, it, it doesn't mind 
working on the spikes and on the roots and still on the bulb so yeah I think this one is getting enough uh, of feed I don't like to overfeed them so I keep them um, yeah keep it on a smaller amount that's just me that's just how I like to grow them and temperature wise I always keep it uh, at night around 18 degrees and this one is in the orchid room most of the time it's a little bit warmer there uh, in winter it's uh, something between 18 and 20 and during the day it's something between 20 and 25 this one can I think take a little bit warmer temperatures but I think that it likes the intermediate so not not too warm not too cold not too warm so uh, in summer I think the sweet spot is around 25 degrees but uh, I'm not completely sure and the other thing that I noticed is that when it does get more daylight and I will zoom in a little oh, oops, other way around again I will zoom in a little bit and I will now put a picture in we'll go to the side a little bit so we can uh, compare the two and in the picture you will see it has uh, the the blooms were a bit lighter colored and that is what you get when you give it more light now um, uh, currently as they are they are quite a bit darker I don't know if it completely shows up but in real life they are quite a bit darker they almost look black personally I like that so I, uh, I now give it a little bit less light and therefore uh, like I said it does get those darker blooms again that wasn't uh, um, actually my plan but it, uh, because I did change uh, my orchid room and uh, greenhouse so I have in a greenhouse higher temperatures for the ones that uh, like it at, at least in summer but uh, so I thought well this one uh, can go inside and luckily it's doing well it does receive daylight because I have a uh, nice window in my orchid room but not not um, not for the whole day so I use artificial light as well nothing fancy I just use LED lights and then they are ca called cool white and in my experience those are uh, the closest to daylight and the cheapest because I need quite a lot of bulbs here uh, light bulbs because I have quite a lot of orchids so yeah that was uh, getting way too expensive to get uh, get them all on the uh, grow light so therefore I uh, I found this and uh, because I uh, do paint and uh, draw quite often I found uh, those lights already because they are very uh, good for uh, uh, recognizing your colors when you uh, like to uh, paint in the evening or at night when it's dark outside you need good light so that's how I came across those lights and I did uh, thought uh, I can at least try to use them on my plants as well and they uh, as you can see they they do fairly well they uh, don't stop blooming they, they just grow further and further and uh, doing their thing as uh, they uh, did before but I noticed the color change in, in blooms. So yeah, that is uh, basically what I'm doing. And uh, like I discussed uh, briefly, I do my orchid uh, reservoir uh, checkups. Because once again, I don't flush. I only flush when I have a very high pH. Then I may flush the pot a little bit. But for uh, the other times, and this one I didn't flush for years now. Because I it's... yeah. It keeps uh, having a nice pH and not too much spark per millions. If it has a uh, drop in pH, because that is what, what in my experience you get when you don't flush, the pH will drop eventually. First it starts to rise, but then it uh, will drop. I give it a bit of calcium dolomite powder. And uh, like I said, I have uh, quite a lot of videos on them and there will be more. My autoglossums, including this one, will be up uh, soon on my channel. I did a uh, check on all of them. But that calcium is very fantastic and also the uh, calcium magnesium powder is, is it but uh, they uh, they can eat it as well so uh, it will take some time to the to uh, to get uh, completely dissolved in the water I, th I believe because it's not really made for that uh, purpose and I'm not really interested in that that much but I like something that my plants like uh, as well of course but I was really interesting uh, interested in uh, keeping the pH as, as an uh, at a nice level so what I do is I will pH it up to around 7 7.5 and I try to mimic the system when you just start uh, outgrowing them in inorganic media you will find that the pH is rising so therefore you, you might want to drop the pH before watering and that is what I try to mimic by putting in the uh,
calcium dolomite. So yeah, this is it. I was enjoying the blooms uh, one more time. As usual, if you have any questions or uh, suggestions, please leave, let me know. And also, I realize that uh, we still are together, Nina and, and, uh, and I. So if you have this plant or you would like to join in in any uh, care club, please let us know. Because we really would like to add uh, more people. And I'm a bit surprised, actually, that uh, the other care collabors, and there are quite a lot of them uh, um, in the meantime, that no one seems to have this plant. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I, I do know if I'm correct. In America, it's fairly hard to find, so maybe that's a problem. But yeah, you would uh, expect uh, every grower to have this beauty. But anyhow, uh, at least for today, we were together and I really enjoyed it. So th thank you so much, Nina, for having me again. And uh, you guys as well for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this, uh, these videos. And uh, I, for now, I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.